Hi, this is Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Baubles, and this is the tutorial I'm doing today. Now, this is the one I did last year, and I didn't do a great job. This should have been down a little further, but it was my first one. Now, I used a tiny little pearl on here, and let me see if I can get that up so you can see it. And I can't find those two millimeter pearls. So I had to do the new one with a slightly larger pearl. I think it looks better in the two millimeter, but I did the new one with a three millimeter, and it still looks okay. But I'm going to show you step by step what I did, and this will be probably a pretty long video. So settle in. If you don't have an hour, you can always pause it and come back. That's the good news about videos. Um, but I want this is one that I have to show you all the details. And what I did is I stamped out an, or cut out all the pieces. And what I did is I took my cookie cutter, and these are very easy to find on Amazon anywhere. Some of them have this detail, which doesn't really show up, and some of them are straighter, but these go for anywhere from a couple bucks to, to real expensive. This was a three-piece set I got, I think, at Walmart. I don't even know what other parts came with it, but it was three pieces, and it's a little could be a, a snow globe or a gumball machine. You could make anything out of it. And so I stamped the back out first. And whatever color you want the back to be. On this one I did red. The one I'm going to show you I did a blue. Sorry. A blue. This one I did a green to kind of show you a couple different. So what I do is I take and I get my felt. And I literally stamp it. And I usually, on a dark color, use silver, or I'll use a black. And I just take the cookie cutter, and then I just, I like to conserve. So I get as close to the edge as I can, and I just push it. And then I take the lid for the ink pad, and kind of, let me see if I can get this on camera for you. There we go. And I just take, and I press down really hard to try to get a real even and then you'll, you'll be able to see it. It's very hard to see, but you can see it in person. It's a lot easier to see. Then you're going to cut that out. And then to do the front, what I do is I cut, I stamp just the base. Like I'll take, and I'll do it in black, see if the black shows up better. Sometimes silver shows up, sometimes you need the black. So let's do the black for the base. And I literally just take the base. It doesn't matter if you go a little bit up because you're just going to cut out what you want. And then I'll just stamp the base down. And if more of it comes off because you just used that, it's okay. But you're just going to cut out the base. And then once you get, and, and cut a little bit extra till you get everything. So what I would do is cut out the base and then just go up slightly. Just go, what I did is I went up slightly up the globe and then cut straight across, leaving that little bottom part of the globe for now. And then you're going to take and you're going to stamp the globe onto. Now this I will use silver because I don't want that black, black, dark mark on my white felt. And then you're going to take and do the same thing. If you get a little bit of the base, it's okay. But you're going to just stamp and what I do is I go down pretty close to the edge of the fabric and I stamp <clears throat> and again either take the ink pad lid or your hands and go really hard and then there see it showed up really good and then what I did was I cut out the globe laid it over here figured out where I wanted to go across and then I just cut it straight across then I laid the base on here like this and matched them up so where this ended like this then I just cut straight across so I leaned I, I put them together and then I just made sure that they laid together whichever one I cut first which usually is the globe I cut first then I put the base and then just cut across it's pretty easy and it doesn't have to be perfect your stitching will will cut it it will cover that so once you get all the pieces cut out um, you're going to have the back, and they don't have to be the same color. You can do the back, let me put the camera up just a little bit. 
You can do the back in a different color than the front, but I just happen to like that. How that looks, and you've got to match them up, make sure they match up good. But it doesn't really matter because you're going to stitch around the edge anyway. And you can always, once you match them up, kind of trim them to match. Then for the tree, I literally took some stencil, but you could use cardboard. I buy the stencil. I always have a, a package of the stencil plastic. And I just rough cut, rough drew a tree. And it's not perfect by any means. Then I laid this down and cut around it is all I did. Actually, I kind of traced it out and then cut it out. And then for the trunk, I just cut out a little triangle, I mean rectangle of brown felt. And that's all I did. And then what I did is I stitched the tree onto the felt. And then I used the same green thread and put the little ornaments on. And all I did was a little tiny, tiny, just stitched it just little tiny stitches I don't know if it shows up on camera but just literally little tiny stitches now I would use green thread and sewing threads fine for this it really is you're not holding any big parts together so if you don't have green beading thread green sewing thread is fine and just stitch your tree down and then use the same green uh, thread and just put on some different colored seed beads for your ornaments I happen to have some little tiny gold stars, but if you don't, just put either a gold sequin or another gold bead up there. It really, it's totally up to you. And then for the snowflakes, I did a variety. I had these that I got at Target a few years ago. These little shape, they're called shape glitter, but they're actually sequins. They had a hole, and I think I paid a dollar or two for them. Um, in their little front of the store area and then I buy a lot from um, Cartwrights and they have several mixes of snowflakes they have mini snowflakes they have several of them and I know they sell also sell snowflakes at Hobby Lobby so um, but if you don't have snowflakes you can even use white sequins and then I use the pearls and what I did, and I'll show you kind of what I did. Um, here's a tree. <clears throat> and um, I'll kind of show you how I sewed the tree together. Like I said, I'm going to kind of try to show you everything I did on this. And you figure out where you want the tree to sit. Um, I sit them over to the side. You could put it in the middle. I kind of went to the side. You want enough room to put some snowflakes in there. But you could put it in the middle. It's not a big deal. But figure out where you want the tree to go. Make sure you have enough room for your base. And that you can cut to fit. I always cut them a little shorter after I, you know, so like that's too long. So I'll probably cut the bottom off and just do it like that. And you're going to hide the bottom of it under the snow. So once you get the tree in place, I just took and I came up through and then I go right along the edge and I just do a little tiny stitches like this it doesn't have to be perfect you're just gonna go right at the edge almost underneath the felt so you're gonna just kinda whip stitch it all the only thing you have to make sure of is you keep the tree straight that's the only thing you care about but as far as the stitches, you can do as many or as little. Now, see what I just did? I wasn't paying attention. Look what I just did. So I'll have to take this off and pull it out. But anyway, so you're just going to keep stitching until you get the whole tree on there. Okay? So um, let me get that on, and then I'll come right back. Well, I was finishing the stitching to show you and this is what happened and this is why I'm moving over to these bigger spools these little spools coil and this kind of thing happens so what do you do if that happens well it's kind of a pain because you can't really do much with that because there's a knot so you can't pull it through so basically you're gonna to have to find a way to tie this off because there is nothing you can do that knot is bad so it's not like you can go through the fabric um, 
what you'll, you know, whatever you do, you have to do it inside the tree so you don't show it on the back. And see, you can go to there, but then see the loop? It leaves a loop. So I'm going to have to undo this. I'm going to have to tie this off somehow. Um, I've never had one. In all the years I've been beating, I've never had one that close to my felt. Usually they happen out here, so you have room to, to work with it. So I'm going to figure out what to do. I might just have to um, kind of loop it, tie, uh, just kind of um, figure a way to um, secure that down and leave it. Um, I'll show you what I decide to do. But when you're doing hand beading, this kind of thing is going to happen. It doesn't matter how long you're doing it, but that's why I'm buying these big spools. Now, I do have a big spool of green, but I'm trying to use up my little spools. But when you undo them, they coil. I don't know if you can see that, but when you undo them, they roll. Where the bigger ones, you've got a bigger piece of thread. It might be gently waved, but... This is one I cut to do some of the snowflakes, and it's it's nice and straight. So that's why I'm saving my money to buy all the big spools, because in the end they're a lot easier to work with. So I'll be right back and show you what I decide to do with this. But I thought it was a teaching moment. This is going to happen to anybody if you bead long enough, but just make sure whatever you do to correct it, you do it. And probably what I'm going to do is hold this down and just try to find a way to secure it down. But do it underneath the tree because you don't want it to show. So if you do it underneath the tree, just catching the white felt, you'll be fine. You can do whatever you have to do. So I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did is I pulled it over to the side, into the middle, and I'm just kind of going around the knot a few times, kind of going through the knot like this, just to secure it, making sure I don't come through the tree, just through the white felt. And just securing it and I'll just leave it I know that looks ugly but when you just as you put the ornaments on, as I put the ornaments on I'll just secure this loop down and nobody will ever know it's there and then I can just kind of catch the thread a couple times so it's not such a big long piece of thread and then I'll go back to my stitching I'll just come back up where I left off right here and keep stitching and again as you're doing this catch underneath the tree that way your stitches don't show so you're just gonna come up and then go under the edge of the tree see so that way you don't see the stitches so I'll be right back when I'm done and then we'll okay the next step. once you get the tree sewn on now you're going to do the ornaments before you put your trunk on. And just start wherever you want. Where your thread comes out, you can just go right back in. Since I'm at the edge, I'll do like a, a ornament on the end of the branch. Kind of like that. And then you're just going to take... Hold on. There. Make sure you don't leave your tail tucked in because you do that over a stitch or two and now you've got a double thread and I don't like double threads on some of this stuff so what I did is I just took a tray and I just had all kinds of different colored red green blue gold silver seed beads and I've got some sequins on here because I do that for the tree ornaments so and then I've got my pearls on here as well so what I'm going to do is just take and pick up say a red seed bead and then just go right back down the corner of the tree and then just kind of randomly go through and you can make this as encrusted you can do it like this or you can encrust it even more however you want so I'm gonna put all the seed beads on and what I do is I work my way up to the top and then I either put a sequin or, and I'll show you with a gold sequin what it looks like. A star or a sequin on the top. I'm assuming if you're doing these ornaments, you probably have some sequins. So I'll just use a little sequin on the top here. Just to show you the difference if you don't have any of the little bitties. This one I used a silver star. 
This one I used a gold star. But if you don't have a star, you don't have to worry about it. You can either put a gold seed bead up the top or you can do a sequin. So I'll be back once the tree is decorated and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so I finished all the seed beads and I put a small round gold sequin and then I'm just going to close it off. And this is what I do in all my ornaments. Now you want to go behind the green and you're just going to loop it a few times. I go one direction and if you're short on thread, keep an eye on your thread because you, if it comes off, it's a pain to have to put it back on the needle. And I go through a few times this direction and a few times this direction and 30 years of doing this type of ornament I've never ever had one come undone and one more time the other direction and call it a day alright and you can see that knot is still there I didn't tie it down as good as I'd planned but I'll catch that later it's not a big deal so that'll get tucked up I'm not worried about it um, so once your tree is done then you've got your little bitty brown trunk and you're just going to do the same thing pick the size trunk you want put it on there and you're just going to stitch around it with the brown thread and I just go in between um, and stitch the brown down all the way around and then I'll be back okay I've got the trunk sewn on and when I went to the back before I stitched it off I went and caught that loop and just stitched it down which I was supposed to do when I did the green as far as this little tab goes here you can just cut that off and your tree is done and now you're gonna start putting on your snow now as you can see I did not st stitch this on until all these pieces are done. Now I'm not going to do all the snow. I'm just going to show you how I did it. And basically I took a piece of white thread and just decided where I wanted to start and just came up through the bottom. And then I took my pearls, which are just little three millimeter pearls that I you can get in these little packages like this. Now this is vintage, but they still sell. This is the the, the oat shape or rice shape there's all different names for them this is a vintage bag obviously 59 cents but they still sell these sometimes in strings sometimes in packages and they also sell the little round pearls that way as well um, and you're just going to pick up a pearl on your needle and pull it down and just start adding them and you want to put a little space like you don't want to come down too close you want to see about how wide the pearl is and then come down because you don't want the hole straight up you want it to kind of lay sideways so you want to make sure you give that pearl enough room and you kind of do that on the tree too when you're doing the ornaments you want to go the space of the bead so that the the bead doesn't face up like there I screwed up see and that one's kind of up because I didn't give it enough room. Well, that doesn't look as nice. You can fix it, but you want that pearl to lay flat. But you also want them to be pretty close together. So you're going to give it enough room that that pearl can lay flat. But you want to get them close together like that. And you're just going to start layering them in. You come up right next to the last one. Add another one. They're a little harder to pick up and again leave enough room and you're going to get pretty close to the bottom edge and just keep adding them in like that and what I did is I did the bottom row and then I just started stacking them and I just stacked them up like it's a globe so I went up the sides of the globe I don't know if you can see it this one might show up better but I did up the sides of the globe and then a little bit of weird lumping well that's like one coming down but you just kind of layer them in there and some can be up like that because they're just beginning to land but just layer them the way you want them to be and once you get all your pearls in then you can start adding your snowflakes and all you do to add the snowflakes is you um, 
just pick where you want to start and so you're going to want to do it once all your snows in so that you know where you're going but then you're just going to come up and then what I did is I did random pearls I did random pearls once the snow was done I did random pearls here and there as I added the snowflake I put a pearl and then I put a snowflake with a clear or sparkly bead and and this I layered a couple snowflakes on this one uh, which is that snowflake on top and I just kind of just put in the snowflakes now if you don't have snowflakes you can just do more pearls that will look fine but I happen to have a bunch of snowflakes so that worked out for me and then once all those pieces are done and I'm not going to show you all the snowflakes added that's there's no need um, that's easy to do you're just going to put the thread up through the snowflake put a seed bead on and then come back through just the snowflake if this is your first tutorial let me show you one in case you don't know how to add the sequins I'll do one to show you when you put on a sequin you come up through the bottom you let me find a snowflake to show you here I'll take one of these and look how cute those are they're so little and you're just going to grab a snowflake out of your collection and you can do this with round sequins too if you don't have um, snowflakes you could do round white or silver and you're just gonna find a place where it fits and then you're gonna take um, a clear I usually use a silver lined clear but you could use a, a pearlescent or whatever sequin you have and you're gonna just go back you're going to put the sequin on, but you're only going to go back through the sequin, I mean the seed bead on. You're only going to go back to the sequin. You're only going to go through the seed bead one time because if you look, that seed bead holds the sequin on. And then you can alternate and put a, a pearl. And just randomly, these pearls, I will tell you, are a pain to pick up. That's why I like the chinette plates. They kind of are easy to grip. And you're just going to add a pearl and then a sequin and a pearl. And just fill the whole thing in until you have this. And then that's when you're done with the top. Then the bottom, there's several things you can do here. Now on the original one, I use these vintage looking flowers. And I still have some. These were in a mix of Christmas sequins that I got from Cartwrights. Now I don't know if they're in every mix but I got a total of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them in that bag. I think it was like a dollar seventy-five. Now the only thing I do different is I would have moved this one down. I don't like where that's at. And on here I used the flowers and then I put a gold sequin in the middle. And again, I wish I'd brought that down just a little bit. But then once you have all your pieces done, and you can do anything down here. You could use a large sequin, and this is only an 8. You can buy 10 millimeter um, sequins, and that would make a nice decoration down here. You could actually use the snowflakes down here. You don't have to do what I did. You could use a snow, three snowflakes. I've also got these here you could use. And they sell these at Cartwrights as well. You could do them in any color. Same with the flowers or the snowflakes. This is just what I chose to do. But you can do anything on this bottom half that you want to do. You could do stripes of sequins. You could just do stripes, sequin stripes. You know, come down and red white green or red and green and just do a stripe there's all kinds of things you could do down here in fact I'll probably do one that's all filled in with sequins but I'm just trying to do something that's a little simpler but anyway this base you can do whatever you want with and this here I want to show you you could do my friend V sent me this and there's like a little snowman so you could even add a snowman in here or you could do a snowman instead of a you could do like this middle one if you go to the clay cutters, they probably have a little bitty tree you could use as well. I have not looked. I don't have a car right now. Our daughter's borrowing our car. But God willing and the creek don't rise, we should get our car back in the next few days because her car is finally done 
they just are trying to get the warranty stuff figured out so that she only has to pay the little bit instead of the whole amount so hopefully we'll have our car back and then I can check out some stuff like this but they might have a tree but if you look where they have clay cutters and also sometimes fondant cutters they will have different stacks but my friend V sent me this and um, it's a three piece um, and you could do the middle one or even the tiny one in here I would do the tiny one if you're doing it with the tree but if you're doing just the um, let's open it up and look if you were doing just the snowman then this would be perfect here's the blank one see he'd be perfect right in the middle and then you could do the snowflakes or the pearls or whatever around him and you could just do his little hat I'd probably put bugle beads or seed beads across there and fill it in with either sequins or bugle beads and then put his little face on and maybe make a scarf out of uh, seed beads or sequins you could probably do sequins and then just have a little scarf hanging off it's a lot you could do with this and I may do one like that later but uh, the tree I knew would be real easy and I didn't have this last year when I did the original ornament I just got this from V a few months ago so there's another option for you could do a snowman or you could even do a, a snowflake in the middle a bigger snowflake and then little snowflakes around it or you could just fill the whole thing in with snowflakes you could do a small little gingerbread or a little house there's no end to what you could put in the center of this snow globe so now once all the pieces are done what do you do well what I did is I did a blanket stitch around the entire edge I just did a plain old blanket stitch and then I don't know why I did that one in red and this one in white oh because I wanted white on the front that's why I matched the front not the back so I did white around the white and I did red around the red now you can stitch down in between but what I did is I decided to use pearls and what I did and I'll show you what I did there and these are those oat pearls and I'll show you how I did that and I believe I used red thread for that but we're going to use white today because that's what I have Do I, let me cut this off of here um, and let me tie this knot real quick and then I'll show you how I stitched it together we're going to pretend I already blanket stitched the whole piece together because I'm not going to make you watch me do that and most of you know how to do a blanket stitch that's pretty easy you're just gonna um, come up you're gonna come up and around the pearls is a little difficult and if you don't know how to blanket stitch you can even do now see I screwed up there because that knot should have been in the middle so um, let me pull this out and redo it and show you hold on um, you want to hide that knot between the two layers whenever you can is it just gives it a nicer look oh boy this white thread is the hardest one to put on the needle because I'm having trouble seeing the needle today but the white thread seems to be the heart white and pink because they're so light if you have a dark green black red blue they're easier to see hold on I'll be right back I'm not gonna make you sit here while I do all right I'm back and then the right way to do this is to come up in between so you're gonna come up between the pearls and tuck that knot in between like you would on a normal ornament when you do the beaded edge now I don't do a fancy beaded edge but you could on this you could either do the triangle or you could do just a single bead but I chose just to do this very simply and I just did a classic blanket stitch where you just do a loop and then you catch the loop after you do the first loop you catch it like that 
and then you do the next little loop and round the pearls it's a little more difficult then before you make it tight you go through catch it and you just keep doing that around the whole piece and I did pretty tiny stitches I'm doing them a little bigger right now but I did pretty tiny well that's pretty tiny I don't know if you can see that they're pretty tiny stitches and I'll go around the whole thing and then in this since I don't know if I have a color that matches that I'll have to go through my thread and see um, I guess I'll go ahead and stitch it together and show you right so I'll be right back when I come back I'll have stitched around the whole piece and then I can show you how to sew it together so I'll be right back hi it's Steffi I'm back with um, the finished stitched piece I've stitched around the entire piece now I did not have a thread in this color so I just did the whole thing in white and I'm going to show you how to do this section here but first I wanted to address decorating the bottom and I use two different methods I use these little flowers that were in the mixture from uh, Cartwright and I use these flowers from Cartwright but I was going to show you a couple other things you can do and I'll show you how you do the piece and what I did is I folded it in half to get the middle and then just kind of brought the needle up through the middle to get my middle one in first and then you can pick where you want it to go now there's several things you can do I've got these kind of pinwheels which you can get from Cartwrights as well as well as vintage ones and I'm not sure if they sell these in craft stores or not but they're called um, starbursts uh, different things I'm not exactly sure but they do have them um, on Cartwright site under their shape I believe under their shape sequins but then they have the red flowers which I also bought from Cartwright and I know I talk about Cartwright a lot and the only reason I do is I've been doing this 30 years and they are the only place I have found that has such an amazing selection and for between a dollar fifty to a dollar seventy five a bag I think it's a ten dollar minimum order um, shipping is not too unreasonable um, you can get a nice selection of sequins so that's the only reason I use them but if you don't want to order anything special and you have some different size sequins you can take now I would go with a bigger red if you had but I'm just gonna go with this eight millimeter for now and just show you what you can do now you can buy sequins I believe at Hobby Lobby up to 10 millimeter but this is a uh, eight and you can just take that and you can layer so like you can take this let me get it in frame here you can take and put this eight millimeter on there and then pick either a green or you could pick a gold I'll put green because it'll show up on camera um, you can put a, a green layered bead on it and then just pick a seed bead that you can either do a green or you can do a red to contrast the green which that's what I'll do and you can do that on the bottom and once you get the middle one in you just kind of go in between and kind of try to line it up as best you can and you can go in and out of the fabric as many times as you need to and perfections never I never strive for perfection because it's a handcrafted item if it's slightly off that's part of its charm but you could even do the other two in gold or you could do them all in green um, I'll do them all in green just to show you the continuity and then I put the red seed bead on it so I've got the green sequin and the red seed bead and I'm pulling them down on there so as usual you'll have your two sequins here you know or it could be one sequin if you do the flower or there's two different flowers or if you do the starburst and then you're gonna go back through the two sequins but not the seed bead keep in mind that seed bead is what holds it together and then if you're since you gotta do from two different sides 
you're going to kind of want to tie this off and then go back over to the other side and do the last one. And I just go through it a few times right behind the sequin, really tiny. You can see, really, really tiny. And I just tie it off. And I, like I always tell you, if you're uncomfortable, you can always put a dab of glue. I don't have a single problem with doing that. I've never done it. But I wouldn't hesitate if I felt I needed it. But you could put a dab of any kind of glue on there, fabric glue, probably even Elmer's glue, just something that would make you feel a little more secure. I'm tying a knot so I can show you the other side. And I'm showing you this simply so that you can see that you don't have to do anything fancy. If you're just getting started, and we all start with just basic materials, and you really aren't comfortable with spending a lot of money, you can go to Hobby Lobby and pick up several different sequins. Have a friend go with you and bring the 40% off coupon because I have never once seen seed, seed, seed beads, or, I mean not seed, seed beads, sequins on sale. Felt has actually been on sale, but I've never seen the sequins on sale ever. So... You, if you, they're two dollars a bag. Okay, here's, and if you find that it looks a little too low, then you just take your needle, put it in there, and just pull it up, and then kind of see if you like where it's at. And see, they're not perfectly matched, but I don't care. I'm not trying to do perfect. If it bugs you, you can measure between them. But I did this just to show you the difference. And this is how it would look if you just did sequins, and it looks fine. And you can get the, I got these red sequins at Hobby Lobby. These are 8 millimeter, but I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive, that they have a 10 millimeter as well. I'd have to go look, but I think they do. Um, and if, I'm going to look, I took some pictures of the sequins. So when I post this video, if I do see before I post it that they have 10, I'll put it in the video as a caption. So that's what it would look like with just the sequence. And you can see, it doesn't hurt it. It doesn't make it less beautiful if you just put layered sequins. You don't even have to layer them if you don't want to. I love layered sequins. But you can do that if you don't want to spend money starting out on a bunch of specialty sequins. Because you might go, well, if I buy a big bag of red flowers, I've got, what, how many come in here? There's 130 flowers in the bag for, I believe, $1.75. You may say to yourself, that's $1.75. I'm only going to make one ornament. I don't know if I'd use the red flowers for anything else, so I don't really want to spend that. That's fine. Same with the pinwheels. Now, you can buy their Christmas mixture for I think the same price and I got about nine of these flowers in it. Now, I can't promise you these flowers are still in there. That is the only problem, but I bet you if you called Cartwrights you could ask them. But I got nine of these flowers in the mixture. I don't know where my bag is, but it had Santas and reindeers and all kinds of stuff mixed in there. So, um, but you could probably call them. You could also use these pinwheels if you could find them. And they may have them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't know. But you could use blue, green, anything. Now, these do not lay flat. So that might drive you crazy. Because it's really hard to secure these. Because they'll always be a little wobbly. Because they are not flat. They have a wave to them. I use them stacked all the time. It doesn't bother me. And I pull them as tight as I can, and they're always still just a tiny bit loose because they don't lay perfectly flat. Because they do have, they're like a potato chip. They have, see, the wave in them. You can get them pretty secure, but it's always going to be maybe not quite perfectly tight. But anyway, once you've decided what you want to do, and you get it all together, you finished your pearls, you got them all done, you've put your embellishments on it, and you stitch the whole thing together with a little blanket stitch. Now I'm going to show you, I mean, again, tie a knot, 
how I did the decorative edge on it. <clears throat> now, um, you can stitch the two sides together if you want. And uh, if that, and I'm trying to remember if that's what I did. It looks like I might have stitched it. Yes, see? I slightly stitched it together right there. So when you do your blanket stitch, you can stitch this down and this piece down. So you would just take and do your blanket stitch. I, I, I don't even know if you have to do both sides, but you could do the blanket stitch and stitch each side down. I did not do that on here, and I'm also going to show you a little boo-boo I did. I did not cut this good enough. If you look, there's a little bit of the curve where I didn't do a perfect job. So it's not perfect by any means. I don't even know if this one's perfect. But I, I boo-booed that, so I'm just showing you that they're not always going to come out perfect. When you cut the globe, I guess when I cut that globe, I didn't get it all the way to the edge. So you just cut the bottom a little bigger, and really once it's all put together, it won't be that noticeable. But this one, I pretty much, um, I think, got right. Yeah. Because you cut the globe first, and then you take and lay this on there, and just cut across and try to get them to match up. There's no real secret to doing it. You just got to kind of do it. And you can even make a template if you want to, you know, once you've cut the first globe, if you're going to make more than one, you could make a template of the globe and then a template of the bottom. I'm only making this one set that I've got here, and I'll have to, you know, obviously, I've got one started that I'll finish here. But these two, I'm going to leave them the way they are once they're done. And you can see they're they're each a little bit different, but that's part of the fun of doing handmade ornaments is each one's a little different. So how did I do? We're going to assume I sewed the two pieces down. I'm not going to make you wait till I do that. And then I come up through the bottom and go back down this is going to show on the back. There's no way to do this without it showing. And what I did is I got as close to the edge as I could. Just to, And what you do, kind of, is you're going to start out with a bead. And so what I did with the bead is I put the bead on. And because I wanted to go to the edge, I kind of came back to the edge like this. And got it's a little difficult you got to kind of catch the edge of the fabric really close and you're going to pull that the strings going to go around and then you're going to go back through that bead you just want to get it as close to the edge as possible because you want that to kind of go real close so you're going to kind of come up go through the bead and then come back around to the edge and then come through. And then I did an alternating where I add a pearl and then the same thing, what I do is see how long the pearl is like this. I just kind of push it into place. Now I will go back and stitch these together but you're going to push it into place like this so that the pearl is sitting where you want it to be and you're going to pull it tight. Then I go back up and I go back through those two beads. Like that. Then you can add the next bead or even two. Go down and then you're going to come back up through the seed bead and the pearl again. You sometimes have to get your needle tucked in there because they're pretty tight so sometimes it's if 
fighting it a little bit, but you get your needle in there and go back through the seed bead and that pearl that you just added. Pull it tight and push it up close to the other two. And just keep doing that all the way across. Now, it doesn't look right because I don't have those two sewn together. But if you sew these two together, then it'll lay perfect. Then you'll add a seed bead and a pearl, go down, come back up, and come back. So you add a seed bead and a pearl. I'll do one more and show you. And you just keep going back. And you can do this if you edge anything. You could do this on clothing. You could do this on a scarf. And I'll be doing some of these parts. So you're going to come to right at the edge of that pearl and go back down. And then you're going to come up on the back right where that seed bead is. And then you're going to go back through that seed bead and that pearl. And then you add the next two. And then you're just going to do that. Whoop, you're going to do that all the way across till you get to the end. Then you'll tie it off behind. And you will have some stitches on the back. Now, if you do like I did here and use a background that you do, like you could do white. If you only have white thread, do a white background and then none of this will show. And really, it doesn't matter because you won't see it from the front. So if all you have is white thread, if you do a white back, you can see where I used red thread on the red. You can barely see it. Now on here, it does show up, but that's okay. It's the back of a homemade ornament. So you're going to keep doing that all the way across until you have it done. I'll do a couple more to show you. Now keep in mind, it doesn't look right because I didn't get those two stitched together. That was um, a mistake on my part. Now you could sew it down, at least this part down, with the edging you're doing. But then you're going to come back up right by that seed bead and go back through the seed bead and the pearl and just keep adding as you go. So then when you're done, this hole in between, and you can do any beads you want across there. You don't have to do the pearls. You could do round pearls. You could do seed beads all the way across. They even sell these beads in a gold or a silver. So you could do anything you want across here. It's just the same premise. If they're just seed beads, you can actually go through three or four at a time if you want. Add two or three, then come back up, go back through those three. And then what you do when you get to the back end, come up and then take one string and go all the way through the whole thing. Um, and then tie it off on the other side. Because if you go back through, once you've added the last seed bead or, or pearl on there, and go through the back and then come back up right at the edge and then take your needle and you'll have to kind of, you know, feel your way through like this. Just kind of feel your way through and you can pull the needle out and then go back through, you know, pull the string tight and then go back through the next section. You don't have to, even though the needle would probably fit, you don't have to do it all at once. When I do, when I go back through a row of beads, oftentimes I'll go through, like I'll come up here, go through three or four, pull the thread tight, then catch the next one, go through, pull the thread tight. Then when you get to the end, pull it tight, and then you go on the back and tie a knot. That just gives it like a nice straight line when you're done. And that's what I did on this one too. It just kind of pulls it nice and tight. That way you have one string going through the whole thing at one time. And it just kind of finishes. And then to do the loop, it's just like I do on all the other ornaments. Let me cut this off and because I'm going to undo that anyway. Um, and I'll show you how to do the loop. And this is just a very simple loop. And you can do this anything you want. You can do seed beads. You can do the same thing you do on the edge there. If you do like me and do the pearl and the seed bead, you can do alternate the pearl and seed bead. If you'd rather just do seed beads, you can do that, but you're just going to kind of fold it, which won't hurt it, find the middle and come up, and then you're going to, it doesn't look like the middle, does it? Hmm, it's not. I screwed up. Okay, let's start over. I messed up. Now I'm going to tell you, when it comes to threading the needle, 
it can be a real pain. Uh, these beading threads, the little spools, it takes me a long time sometimes. But this thread here, see if I can get that to, it's a Nemo, let me see if the camera will pick it up. Let me see if I can get the Nemo White D3 ounce. It says coats. I think I got this from Amazon. I want to say it's around $30. I think it's like $25 for this big spool and then um, $5 for shipping or it's $30. Somewhere between $25 and $30 for a spool. This stuff, now I don't know if all the colors are as good. I'll have to check them out. This stuff threads the best of anything I have. It doesn't fray. It stays really stiff. And you can get it right through the needle. Where this, uh, these little spools here, it you can see it's puffier. It's a little puffier. I don't know if you can see that. It's a little puffier, and it frays really easy. And these are much harder to, and they're like thicker. Even though they're both a D, this seems a little puffier, and it's harder to thread. So that's another reason why I'm going over to these big spools. I'll continue to use up my little spools, but boy, oh boy, this stuff's great. So, all right, so do it better than I did. Get the bottom, get the whole thing lined up, and then you can go through the top. I didn't do it right there. Okay, then once you get to the middle... You're going to pick what beads you want. And let's just go with what I did on the first one. And you're just going to pick up. Let's see if I can get this so you can see what I'm doing. I'll get more of the beads out. Um, and I just pick up a, per, uh, a seed bead. And... A pearl. And a seed bead and a pearl and a seed bead can you let me see if I can get this so you can really see what I'm doing let's see I'm trying to get my camera in place so you can see my I did not buy the best camera stand so it really I thought I was buying a good one but it just folds in on itself sometimes um, and if I get it in the wrong position, it slowly melts. So I'm not very happy with this uh, camera stand tripod I bought. Let's see if I can get that so you can see it. So do you see how I'm picking up a seed bead? Now this one is tight. It doesn't want to fit on the needle. But I just pick them up and make sure you keep alternating if you are alternating. Pick up a seed bead. and a pearl and you can put as many on the needle as you feel comfortable doing at a time um, I usually pick up quite a few now, sometimes these pearls do not want to you might have to actually pick it up to get it loaded on the needle um, and you just keep going until you get it the length you want once you get it the length you want you you want to do about six inches long because then folded, that makes a three inch loop. And then you're just going to come right back through, pull it tight, and then do like I show you where you go in a circle one direction a few times, then in a circle the other direction a few times, and then go back through the original direction once or twice, and then just cut it off. I used to tie knots, but you really don't need to. If you do three or four times each direction, it's, I've never had one come undone. So that's how I made this little guy. And like I said, you can do anything on here. You could just buy giant, because I have some really big snowflakes. They're an inch big. And you could do a big inch snowflake and other snowflakes around it. You could do the snowman. You can do a tree. And there might be some nesting trees like this that are tiny like the snowman. You could do a little tiny gingerbread on there. Now that'd be a little harder because the details would be harder to do. I found the tree is tiny, but with the seed beads you can do the ornament. And this little guy, you could do seed beads and bugle beads and, and do him. And maybe later I'll do one to show you. But for now, it at least gives you an idea of some of the different things you can do. 
Um, if you're very good at drawing, you can make your own little templates up. Um, I go to Hobby Lobby and I buy the stencil plastic. But I know my friend V. Wills over at V. Wills Design, she buys the plastic like folders that they sell this time of year when school's going in and they're cheap, like 25 to 50 cents. And she uses those to make stencils because they're kind of the same plastic. These are like $3 for three sheets. If you use 40% off, obviously, you will get about $1.20 off. And you get I th pretty good sheets. They're pretty good size sheets. Um, hold on. I'll come back and show you. Okay. This is what I pick up. It's called Stencil Blanks. They're $2.99. And they're pretty good size. Uh, let me get a ruler and I can tell you exactly. Because if you're going to make a lot of ornaments, this could do a lot of stencils for you. So the sheets are, so I don't see it on here. Oh, yeah, 8x10 right there. 8x10. And I think they have bigger packs too, but three of these will really make a lot of stencils. And that's what this little tree was made out of is, let me find my little tree here. That's what I made this out of is the this, this stencil blanks. Um, this one's sealed. Let me see. This, I don't know if I've taken one out of here yet. But, um, see? This is just a nice heavy duty plastic that you can draw on and it's thin enough you can trace so you can see through it enough to trace a pattern so if you printed something out on the internet that you like you could actually put it under here and trace it out cut it out and have a nice stencil and I have an envelope that I keep in my drawer with all my stencils in it and some of my stencils I made 30 years ago and I'm still using them and my, a lot of my old ones were just made out of cardstock and I actually put scotch tape over it on both sides and then cut around the scotch tape to make it heavier but now you don't have to because you can do this the only problem with the, the um, notebooks using those is they're colored so if you really want something clear that you can see through if you use the 40% off coupon, you can get it for, what, $1.80 for three sheets? But if you want, if you're going to be tracing onto it, then you can go ahead and just get the cheapy plastic notebooks, which would be maybe $0.25 or $0.50 cents for two big, well, they'd be big enough to put paper in, so they'd be pretty good size. Um... And they come in colors, purples and oranges and yellows. You might be able to find one that's a pretty light color. But those are some ideas on how to make stencils. And if you, if you don't like drawing or you don't feel you're a good artist, it is so easy to get online and print out pictures. There's lots of free clip art you can print out. There's lots of free patterns online. Just find one you like print it out, get it printed out in the size you want it, and then you can trace it or stencil or draw around it and make yourself some stencils either on cardboard or if you want to pick up this uh, stenciling plastic, then you've got them forever. If let's say a family member has cookie cutters you can borrow, then you can take and do the same thing is you can just set the cookie cutter on the plastic or cardboard draw around it or if you have an ink pad stamp onto it and cut it out and if you want to strengthen it if it's like thin cardstock then do the tape because I've got some with the tape that have lasted me 30 years that I still use like my little heart that I did the heart pins that I believe is a taped piece so there's lots of things you can do to make stencils but this particular one you don't even need a cookie cutter like this if you have a round biscuit cutter or you can print out a round, if you're good at printing out round, or if you have a round cookie cutter or a biscuit cutter, you could do the globe, stamp it out on cardboard, and then just simply draw out whatever shape you want. If you want a real flat straight one, if you want a rounded one. This is not complicated. This is one of the easiest. Let me give you the measurements on it if you want to do it yourself. And this is 
not quite three inches. You can see it's about two, just under two and three quarter inches. And um, the little bit, like two and a half inches tall. And then the base is a mm, little over two, maybe two and a quarter inches. And it's about an inch high in the middle. So you could do it any size you wanted. If you wanted it a little bigger, this is just what the size of my cookie cutter is. These cookie cutters sell online anywhere from two to fifteen dollars, depending on the seller. This I got in a set of three. I could not tell you what the other two were. I think I got them at Walmart for four or five bucks. But you can buy all different kinds of this shape on pretty much anywhere that sells cookie cutters. Amazon, eBay, Etsy. If you really want to have the cookie cutter. If this is one you feel you would use a lot. And you can use it for your cookies. I just scrub it. I get all this ink off with a wipe. Then I scrub it in the sink, and then we use them for cookies. I just make sure there's no ink left on it. I clean it well, and they're just fine. I make sure I stamp them out and make sure there's absolutely no ink left on them before I use them in the cookie dough. And I've never had any cookie dough show ink on it when I've reused them for cookies. So you don't have to dedicate them just to cookie cutter ornaments but you just have to make sure you clean them extremely well so I'll use a Clorox wipe first and I'll scrub it rub the edges rub all the ink off and then I'll actually get in there with the sink and the sponge the scrubby side of the sponge gently scrub them and I make absolutely sure there's not a bit of ink on it before we use it for cookies Usually the ones I use for cookies are not the ones I'm going to use for ornaments because I like to use the ones that have a little bit of an imprint in them. And I, we have some special ones that we've used since our kids were little. Um, and a lot of these new ones I probably will just keep for my ornaments. But you don't have to. If you want to make a cookie out of this, can you imagine it would be a beautiful cookie? So anyway, that is my... Um, ornament. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and the possibilities are absolutely endless with this. If you wanted to decorate this whole bottom with seed beads you could do rows of seed beads, you could do stripes like this, you could do stripes like that, you could put the flowers or you could do something like this and then put other sequins around it. You could do this whole thing in sequins and just put the flowers. You could put sequins on the tree using different colored seed beads. The possibilities are endless. I did it simple to show you a simple ornament. But you could absolutely go crazy. You could put the fancy edge on it. And I'll probably eventually do a fancy one. And if I do, I'll show it in one of my videos. But I'm trying to do things that are still beautiful, but a little simpler and easy that don't take as much work or as many resources. As for the little snowflakes, you can get snowflakes all types of places. But like I said, just like I did this, you could do simple white sequins. You don't have to do snowflakes. You could do white sequins with the pearl in the middle or a seed bead in the middle. And you do your pearls in between. You don't have to buy anything special to do this ornament. And I actually encourage you to not buy too many specialty sequins till you're absolutely sure this is something you're going to be doing a lot of because you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. I have spent hundreds of dollars on sequins over the years. I don't even know what I've spent at Cartwright's over 10 or 12 years. It could be $1,000. I have a lot of sequins, but this is a passion of mine, and I enjoy collecting them, not just using them. So it's partly collecting them and using them, so it's something I really enjoy. And I usually don't spend a lot at one time, although I've had $100 orders. Usually it's about a $20 order. I'll order a bunch of stuff that I don't have, like I'll add a few specialty sequins uh, here and there. Like I just ordered all those flowers. They were $40 and I had, I think, $25 in my PayPal account. So it didn't cost me much out of my bank account because I'd earned some money. 
Um, but you don't have to do that. You can do the $10 minimum or $20 and just pick up a few basics. Um, as for snowflakes, I do know they sell some snowflakes at the craft stores. I don't know what sizes, so you would have to check that out. Um, but there's lots of options. And like I said, you can use clear or iridescent or white sequins and the pearls. There's just no end. And if you don't have pearls, you can do the same effect with seed beads. I don't see why you couldn't. Or e-beads, which are the bigger seed beads. So you can do this with anything. But these pearls are pretty inexpensive, and you can get them at most craft stores, uh, the little tiny pearls. So I do think it looks better with the smaller than the bigger ones, but either one works well. So this one, I kind of put that one too close, so it kind of looks like a weird little ridge. So when you're doing it, be careful that when you're going to put one that's coming down, you don't put it too close. Because that just, like that looks fine right there. Can you see? That looks good, but that one looks so close. It almost looks like it's a pointy mound of snow. It is farther up, but it's only got like one pearl's length between it. So keep that in mind when you're getting close to the bottom. Maybe leave a little more space. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, now I'm going to upload this. This is like uh, about 10 little videos, so it's going to take me a little time. But I would love to hear your comments and what your thoughts are. And if any of you want to tackle this, I would love to see what you come up with. Because I've got some pretty creative subscribers. And some of you are going to excel me, I have a feeling. Because I it took me 30 years to do this kind of stuff. And some of you guys are coming out the gate doing this fancy stuff. And it took me a long time. So I'm really impressed with some of you guys. And uh, wow. So anybody that does anything, I would love you to show me what you've done. And uh, um, I wish we could come up with a way to share it. But on my Facebook page, I think you might be able to post it. I'll have to see if people can share photos on there. I think you can. So if you can, post what you've done on there. Uh, Steffi's Beads and Bobbles or Steffi's Beads Bobbles. I don't think they let me put the and in there. But I think I have the link down below. And um, come by my page. And if you've made any beaded ornaments, please share on that page so everybody can see. Um, I think that would be a lot of fun for people to see what you've done. And... Um, if you can't post, let me know, and we'll see about resetting up the page in a way where people can post. I'm new to this. I don't know how I have that page set up. So let me know if you're not able to post on there. Um, and if you can't, I'll see what I have to do to have more of an interactive page. But if you like this, I hope you'll like my video. Um, I would love to hear any comments. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe. I've got a lot more I'm going to be doing. I've got another really fun video. I cannot wait to do that one. And, it, and it's got a lot of moving parts, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think you all are going to love that one too. And then I've got a couple non-Christmas things. I'm going to do this little hummingbird. My best friend asked for a hummingbird and her housewarming parties in two weeks. So I want to get this little guy done. So I will do a video on him and um, or her on it so that you can see the little hummingbird. And this is tiny. You can see from my hand. And I got this one on Amazon. Um, I don't know what I paid for it, but probably couple bucks plus shipping so probably about five bucks with shipping um, that's the only thing you can you can get anything you want online but you got to be careful it is a real addiction I would not have almost 800 cookie cutters if it wasn't so borrow what you can make templates when you can you don't have to spend money on cookie cutters you can get a picture of a hummingbird sideways print it out and trace around it and make your own template. Blow it up on your computer. You don't have to spend money and I'm going to actually be pulling back from buying any cookie cutters going forward. 
I'm going to make use what I have, but if I find something I really want to make, I'm going to try to draw it out. And if I do, I'll share that too. But anyway, this is going to be a really long video. I have no idea how long, but I just really want to cover everything. And I will be back soon. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to show you my earrings, but I'll do that in another video. I was going to show you how I did that, but this is too long. So when I do my next video, I'll also show you the earrings. I told you I'd arranged them, so I thought it'd be fun to show you. So I will do that in an upcoming video. And I don't know if the hummingbird will be next or if I'm going to tackle some of the stuff we still have undone, like the dominoes. Uh, we have a bead bag still. We have bead bags to still do. We have a lot to do. So I'll be back in the next couple days with something. And as always, I appreciate you guys so much. And I'll be back soon. Bye.